Hello, my name is Benny and today I want to show you the Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL. WSL is a very cool technology because it allows you to easily run a full Linux distribution on your Windows machine. So when you're working with projects that are built for Linux and require some Linux tooling, then you can easily run those projects now on Windows using the Windows subsystem for Linux. And the very cool thing is that you can connect it with Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code will run behind the scenes the Linux for you while you can keep coding on Windows. Let me show you how that looks in practice. Imagine there's a TypeScript API that is built for Node.js and you are running on Windows. You may think, cool, I can just check it out. I have Node.js, I have um, TypeScript compiler here on my system, and then I can just build the project. Yeah. Usually it will work like this, but it can happen that then uh, sometimes uh, people use some very specific commands that are not available on Windows. For example, here in the script section, there is a clean command which uses rm-rf, which means that this one is um, yeah, built with Linux in mind, with Unix in mind, and will not run on Windows, because on Windows, when you check um, the command prompt and you type in rm, you will find that it's not a tool that is um, available on Windows. In this case, you can use the Windows subsystem for Linux and still make it work, and I will show you how. The Windows subsystem for Linux is a very fancy technology built by Microsoft that makes it possible to run a full Linux environment on your Windows system. And the cool thing about it is that you can run many different Linux distributions, you will see later, and you're not just bound to a single one. How does it um, do that? So it actually virtualizes the Linux kernel using uh, Hyper-V and this makes it possible that you have a Linux file system, you have all the Linux utilities that you wish for, and that you can actually run a full Linux distro. Installing WSL is very simple. All you have to do is entering one little command into your PowerShell. You can find it here, this one, just copy it and type it into your PowerShell. Once done, you can open your PowerShell and you can verify the status. So I do that here and I'm seeing now that I have WSL in version 2, which is the one to go with. Once you installed WSL2, you can go and find a Linux distribution. Um, yeah, how to do that? Actually, they are available in the Microsoft Store, which is super cool because Microsoft opened up that much that it says, hey, Linux distributions, you can be now in, in the Microsoft Store. Who would have thought that like 10 years ago? Yeah, no one, I guess. <laughs> if I go to the Microsoft Store here, then of course I can install the latest Halo Infinite, which is very tempting, but we were looking for a Linux distribution. And I am suggesting that we um, check out the very popular Ubuntu, because they also helped, or the team behind it helped, to uh, make it happen that this uh, Windows uh, subsystem for Linux actually um, exists. So uh, they helped also and uh, cooperated with Microsoft to build it. And that's why I give them the attribution here to also install their operating system. Once we have Ubuntu installed, we can actually simply launch it by clicking this uh, button and it is blazing fast and pops up right now. So here I am in my Ubuntu system. I can see that I'm in a home directory and I can actually also check my Ubuntu release. So LSB release and then I think it's minus A and I will see that I'm on Ubuntu. Another cool and nice thing is that you can access this file system from your Windows machine. So if you open up your Windows Explorer, then you can go to the WSL network and here you will see connected network drives and your Ubuntu environment now pops up here and is fully accessible. So I click on this directory, this network directory and I can see my home directory, Benny code and here I can see some of the folders. I will just list them over here on my Linux and I will see here that um, it, uh, it maps what I see in my File Explorer here on Windows and let's create from the Windows File Explorer a folder, for example, 
from Windows, yeah, for demonstration purposes. And if I now list all my directories here on Ubuntu, then I will see the directory that I created from Windows. It also works the other way around, so you can access files on Windows from Linux, in this case Ubuntu. Just go to the mount directory, cd mount, and from here we can check all our drives that we have here on our Windows system. And I have a drive C and D. And if I CD into C, then I will see my um, temp directory. And uh, here I will just create a new directory, which I will call from Ubuntu. So I've done that. And now I can check the file explorer here in Windows. C, temp, and here I see my from Ubuntu directory. Now comes the moment you all have been waiting for. I am in Visual Studio Code and I want to use it through my Ubuntu environment. As you can see here, my terminal still is in a Windows environment. Yeah, I haven't changed uh, anything yet to VS Code. I just started it and of course it will start with my lovely Windows. And if I want to connect it with my Ubuntu, then I need to use an extension. This extension is built by Microsoft itself, so if um, you go to extensions, you can find it by looking for remote WSL, and remote WSL will then make it possible to connect VS Code with um, the Ubuntu distribution that you have installed. And you can select the distribution by clicking here on the bottom left, yeah, there's this green open remote uh, window button, and if you click it, you can say, okay, you want to open um, VS Code with a certain environment and a certain distribution, and I'm picking here my Ubuntu. Once done, you will see that it will start now the system for me in the background, so I don't have to start Ubuntu first. For example, you can start Ubuntu now from the uh, App Store or from your installed apps on your Windows machine, but uh, you can also have uh, VS Code starting it for you. Once our VS Code is connected with the Windows subsystem for Linux, we can see that in the bottom left corner. And we can then make uh, use of uh, very Linux specific commands such as pwd or the uh, lsb release minus a command. Yeah? And uh, this is uh, super cool now because um, our UI of VS Code runs on Windows, so it's rendered by my graphic card and uh, by my graphics drivers uh, through Windows. But uh, behind the scenes um, in the terminal and for all the commands that I will execute now here through VS Code, yeah, behind the scenes runs Ubuntu. So I'm now having a hybrid model yeah, where I have the VS Code UI on Windows and the terminal on Ubuntu. Um, what do you need to know in this case? In this case, it's very important to know that, for example, some things are not shared. Um, if you have Node.js installed on Windows, then the Node.js on your Ubuntu machine is not the same, yeah? because um, this Ubuntu machine doesn't have access to your Node.js that you installed on Windows. So you need to, for example, reinstall or firstly install Node.js on your Ubuntu operating system as well. Yeah, because you have to remember that uh, your Ubuntu is still its own operating system. Yeah, so if you have um, also like keys, like SSH keys, then um, those ones that you have on Windows are not accessible on Ubuntu. Yeah, it has its own uh, file system, its own directories, so you need to bring those things over. You can do that in the um, file explorer. And if we go back here to the Windows subsystem, then we can see all connected um, distros. And I see here, for example, Ubuntu. By the way, if we close VS Code or if we close the Ubuntu app, then um, you won't see those network drives here because if you shut down this operating system, yeah, this uh, virtual um, system, then of course the network connection to its folders will be also closed. Yeah, just keep that in mind. And here in this Ubuntu, I can find my home directory and my username here. 
And there's, for example, an SSH directory. And I uh, would have to make sure that if I want to share credentials between Windows and, and uh, Ubuntu, that I, I bring them over. So I showed this um, IB um, repository, which I want to clone. So I will clone it now, clone. And I have the URL still in my clipboard. The very cool thing is if you hit Windows and the V, you will get um, a clipboard history in Windows. Yeah, and you can then use uh, multiple elements here. And um, I will use that URL that I previously copied. And then I can jump into this um, project and I can open it using code dot. This will bring up a new VS code um, window here. And in this window, I see the NPM scripts and there was one script that um, wouldn't have run on Windows, which was the clean script here because it uses the RMRF. So let us just run it and see what happens. And we see, yep, now it runs because now we are on Ubuntu. We've seen very fancy techniques today. Yeah, We installed a different uh, Linux distribution on Windows. We connected it with VS Code. We built a project that was initially built for a non-Windows system on Windows. Throughout this um, WSL remote connection in VS Code, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, we created also folders from Windows inside a Linux file system. Yeah, how crazy and great is that? But there's also something more, of course. Yeah, <laughs> there's one thing for the end that I want to show you, which is the connection with Docker. Because you may have installed Docker already on Windows, and now you would ask yourself probably, oh, do I have to install Docker now also on Ubuntu? Yeah, if I want to build a project that is Linux specific, but also uses Docker, how, how can I make that happen? Yeah, we have that here, for example, in this project, I can see that there is um, a Docker compose file. So there is something going on with Docker. Do I have to install Docker now on Ubuntu? Well, actually, you can reuse the Docker that you already have on your Windows. So let me just start. Docker, Dragon Center would be also nice, but let's start Docker. And then we will see uh, how Docker actually integrates with WSL2. So here comes the whale. And in the settings of Docker, we can um, set Docker to use uh, WSL2. And if it uses this engine, then we can go to the resources. And in the WSL integration, we can share our Docker now with our Linux distribution. Now yeah, we have to take this uh, toggle here. And if we enable this toggle, then we can go back here in our terminal and uh, we can then see that Docker is actually running. Yeah. That's it for the WSL intro. I hope you have now a very good understanding of what it is, um, yeah, what it actually means and also like how to make use of it and how to integrate it in your workflow. Have fun with it and keep me posted on what you're building. And thank you very much to Microsoft and Canonical for building this Windows subsystem for Linux.